Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Mortal Kombat 2021 callbacks and Easter eggs. You made it. I always rely on Cole Young. Just circling back on those superpowers. I think I get it now. It's kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Is it going to be fireballs? Is it going to be lightning? Huh? I knew it. It's all real. These murals are the living history of Mortal Kombat. For this list, we're looking at the coolest references you might have missed in the 2021 Mortal Kombat movie. Major spoilers are ahead, so if you haven't seen it, maybe come back after watching. Did you see any references we might have missed? Let us know in the comments. Hey, big boy! <gasps> Number 10, Scorpion and Sub-Zero's Feud. It's one of the biggest rivalries in video games, and it served as an excellent opener for the movie. Mortal Kombat immediately reintroduces one of the franchise's oldest stories, of how Hanzo Hisashi and his family were ambushed by the Lin Kuei clan. While we did see this part of Scorpion's backstory in Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, we had never seen this given a more cinematic treatment. Between the excellent cinematography and over-the-top gore, retelling this part of the franchise's history was a great way to tell hardcore fans that the IP was in the right hands. <laughs> Number 9. Classic Moves The new Mortal Kombat movie could have easily misfired with bad CGI and forced references just like the 1995 original and its sequel, which featured too many basic kicks and punches. However, this new iteration features several moves, new and old, that fit into fights fluidly. A little help? Sonya's energy blasts and Kano's laser eye have never looked this cool, and Kung Lao's hat teleportation was such an awesome reveal. The movie even recreates fatalities featured in the games, such as Jax's famous head clap and Kung Lao's buzzsaw hat fatality from the 2011 reboot game. If you've played the games, you know how those go. Flawless victory. Number 8. Nitara, Reiko, and Cabal. My loyal warriors, Cabal. General Reiko. If you've been playing Mortal Kombat since the late 90s or early 2000s, you may have recognized a couple of the cronies Shang Tsung brought on later in the movie. In addition to Melina, the evil sorcerer had chosen Cabal, Reiko, and Natara as his warriors for the tournament. She is beautiful, isn't she? Yeah, that screech is a real turn on. Many will recognize Cabal thanks to his inclusion in the 2011 game and the recent Mortal Kombat 11. As for the other two, Reiko and Natara only appear in two games each, with Reiko debuting in Mortal Kombat 4 and Natara in Deadly Alliance. Considering how obscure these two are in the franchise, it was surprising to see them get a spot in the story. Now destroy him, my beauty. Number 7. Familiar and Ancient Faces I knew it. It's all real. These murals are the living history of Mortal Kombat. There were a few more characters we recognized that, unfortunately, weren't a part of the cast. For starters, we do get to see a mural of the Great Kung Lao defeating Shang Tsung. However, before Cole, Sonya, and Kano arrive at Raiden's temple, we saw a couple more recognizable faces while Sonya explains to Cole the meaning behind his birthmark. She points to a photo of a Native American that looks very much like Nightwolf. It seems that throughout history, different cultures all over the world, they reference a great tournament. Another photo depicts a man in what appears to be Mayan garb, which we can safely assume is Kotal Khan from MKX and MK11. Cool to see them have some part in the lore. There's more to this, Cole. I know it. Number 6. The Pits in the last act of the movie, the team comes up with a plan to take on Shang Tsung's warriors and save Earthrealm. Jax chooses to fight Reiko in a setting that feels all too familiar. Let's see, spikes, bones, a narrow pathway, yup, every Mortal Kombat fan will immediately recognize the pit upon first glance. Hey big boy! <gasps> 
The pit is arguably the most recognized location in the Mortal Kombat franchise due to its simplistic design and iconic stage fatality. Sadly, we don't get to see Reiko fall onto a bed of spikes in the movie, but it was still exciting to see the classic location get a nod. Number 5. Move Spamming Fight! No Harry Potter shit, huh? Okay, this one isn't specifically tied to Mortal Kombat, but anyone who has played a fighting game with friends will appreciate this. In order to awaken their superhuman abilities, Cole and Kano must train with Kung Lao and Liu Kang. Whereas Cole suffers a deep cut from Kung Lao's hat, Kano kind of had it worse. When fighting Liu Kang, Kano suffers defeat from getting sweep kicked three consecutive times. Cute. Real cute. Let's see, throw down again. Yep. Our supposedly honorable monk was employing a cheap trick known as move spamming. We can certainly sympathize with the Black Dragon leader, but we couldn't help laughing, especially given how many times we've done this to our own friends. That the only move you know, mate. Ah, oh, fuck. Number four. Where is Katana? We didn't win nine straight tournaments by following the rules. Yeah, we were asking this a few times after Melina makes her appearance. How do you have the evil clone of a princess when said princess is nowhere to be found? Don't worry, our darling Katana was not forgotten entirely. One scene shows a brief confrontation between the Earthrealm warriors and Shang Tsung. In one particular shot, you can see Katana's fan hanging on a wall behind Raiden. Besides, the other gods are too lazy to stop me. I have come for your souls. This was a nice nod to the character, but it raises so many questions. Was Katana one of the warriors who failed to win? Could she be dead in this version of Mortal Kombat? Why does Raiden have her weapon hanging on his temple walls? Maybe the sequel needs to explain this. Kill them. Number 3. Citizen Cage Poster Hey beautiful, Johnny Cage. Good for you. Another character who was noticeably absent was our favorite smart mouth movie star. Seriously, where is Johnny Cage? Well, he is referenced, and we're not just talking about in the ending. That poster can be seen early on in the movie, and it also serves as a reference to the reboot game. That's right, that's right. Who's it gonna be? One of MK9's earliest moments sees Johnny trying to hit on Sonya and begins naming movies he starred in, one of them being the movie advertised on the poster, Citizen Cage. Yeah, this is an easter egg that can be easily overlooked. We almost missed it ourselves. What? Massive Strike? Citizen Cage? Ninja Mime? None of those ring a bell? Number 2. Another Four-Armed Monster? The poster isn't the only thing we almost overlooked. One line of dialogue might hint at the appearance of another character in a sequel. Shortly after Cole defeats Goro, his wife, Allison, and daughter Emily start packing, with Allison saying how she wasn't waiting around for another four-armed monster. Completely sure. Look, I just want to get us out of here. Well, hate to be the bearer of bad news, Ali, but there might be another four-armed monster still to come. Did anyone else remember that Kentaro and Shiba are huge and have four arms? Something tells us Allison's going to lose her mind if she encounters these two in the next movie. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Shinnok's Amulet The face of Earthrealm is in our hands. There are not many of us with a marking left. If you don't think they're going to try and make a Mortal Kombat cinematic universe, then you must have missed this one. While Liu Kang shows Cole, Kano, and Sonya around Raiden's temple, Kano decides to steal one particular artifact. This is actually the same amulet that imprisons evil elder god Shinnok in the games. Liu Kang tells him to put it back, though we never see this occur. I'll put that back. What back. Besides, Kano could have quickly swiped it again shortly after Liu Kang left to talk to Sonya. So chances are Kano still has, uh, had the amulet on him up until his death. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you set up a franchise. No one knows where it is. Well, I do now. Excuse me. Where is it? Uh, you got a pen? You want to ride this down? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.